Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions, and welcome back to another episode of our EV Basics series. Um, it's been a while since we filmed the last one. I've been down with bronchitis and uh, making up for lost time and so forth, so this has been neglected somewhat. But in today's episode, we're going to talk about charge ports and throttle control. You remember in our last episode we talked about um, chargers. Well, chargers on board the vehicle and we have to have some way to get the uh, our voltage, our well current to the vehicle. Now you could simply use a, an extension cord and run the extension cord to your directly to your charger. Um, but we typically use a charge port. Two main types that we use on conversions. One is a level one charge port, which is uh, 110 volt, 15 amp, looks like such. And this could be mounted in the original fuel uh, tank inlet area or wherever you want to mount it. And it's simply on the back side set up to you know, accommodate your Romex that would uh, go to your charger, go to the junction box like we use with our safety interlock, um, directly to your cord. But anyway, this would be for your 110 15 amp setup, which takes the greatest amount of time to charge, of course. The other one would be the level 2 charger, it's 220 volts up to 50 amps, and you can use, you know, one that's compatible with like a dryer, which 30 or 40 amp service, uh, RV park, which could be up to 50 amp service, whatever. But what we're going to talk about is the most common uh, because it's the standard used for level two charging on uh, you know manufactured vehicles and in public charging and that is the J1772 which this is. This would be the part that would go on the vehicle and then go to your charger. This also is um, designed to be able to communicate with your charge equipment. The well, if you go to a public charging station, that's not a charger, that's charging equipment. In other words, it's the interface between the grid power and your, your charge port. And so here's the other end of our GE Watt station. This is a J1772 charger that you would find in a public charging location and it simply mates to our charge port. If I can see what I'm doing here. <clears throat> and so what the additional wiring is, and there's a little circuit that comes with this, is so that these two communicate. So that when you're plugging this in, there's no live power coming through your charge uh, equipment. This is technically called an EVSE, Electric Vehicle Service Equipment. And so when this is first connected, uh, this latches. And once that's latched in place, the two communicate. The charge uh, equipment knows that you're you know, connected to the vehicle. And then it activates the relays in here and uh, starts your charging. And when you go to disconnect it, if it were still charging, uh, it also communicates to turn this off when the uh, charger is finished charging. It, uh, when you press this button, as soon as you do that, before you break that connection, it opens up the contacts in here and you're able to remove it without arcing. 
So that's your two most common charge port setups. The other is uh, that we're going to talk about today is the throttle control. What is typically used in, uh, and again, your, your uh, manufactured vehicles, and as well as being very popular in conversions, is a Hall Effect throttle. I don't have one to show you, unfortunately, uh, today, but um, they're basically a uh, electronic throttle that has no physical connection. So they don't wear out and, uh, and have issues that's common with the pot box. Pot box is the least expensive route to go. They're very popular uh, in earlier conversions. Um, we still use them on occasion. And, uh, and they're compatible with the uh, Curtis controllers and so forth. So here's an example of a very popular pot box. It's the Curtis PV6. You have your throttle right here. You have different spots where you can mount to it to accommodate for the different throw in your, your pedal. And there's a micro switch on here which is used for different uh, purposes that we won't go into in this brief video. But it's called a pot box, pot short for potentiometer. And I'll show you why, you know, what the name comes from. So we'll show you that right now. Well, I removed the front piece here that has the micro switch uh, attached to it and kind of a little protective plate here. And there's a spring on here, return spring. And on the back side, it's just simply a potentiometer. Thus the name pot box. The potentiometer's in a box. Just makes it, uh, you know, easy for mounting, so forth. And so, these do uh, wear out both internally in the pot box, as well as they, uh, they'll have issues because, um, you know, there's, there's really not a, a, a bearing in here or anything. And so just from the pull and the motion, uh, this will wear out and not make good contact inside the pot box head. But anyway, very simple. I run about 60 bucks. But uh, so there you have it. This is what then is going to feed the signal to your controller uh, from your throttle. So your throttle cable or, or linkage would connect to this mechanically and do that. With the Hall effect, again, you're going to connect to your pedal or um, your linkage or, or cable. There's going to be some kind of mechanical connection between your foot and the throttle and then it's fly-by-wire after that. So that's it for uh, this episode. In our next episode we're going to talk about power steering and power brakes. So I hope you join us then. Thanks for watching. Well, just another reminder that uh, if you have any questions or comments regarding uh, this video or any of our videos, uh, please don't leave uh, comments on the YouTube channel uh, because we won't respond to those. If you'd like a response, please email us at info at ev4unow.com. Then also, uh, we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel and we uh, as always, appreciate your watching. Hope you tune in again. Thanks. Hello, I'm Richard with ev for u Custom Conversions. You want to learn more? You want to learn about all the components in greater detail? You want to actually install the components and wire conversion? Test it and drive it? Well, you can. By attending one of ev for us three-day hands-on conversion workshops. 
you will get a chance to learn, discuss, ask questions about all the components used in a conversion. Wiring techniques, hardware used, safety, how it all goes together, and much more. But we don't just talk about it. We go into the shop and install the components in a vehicle, wire it up, and test it. After testing in the shop, we test it on our test track and in the industrial park where we're located. One of the vehicles we'll be using in 2014 is our sand rail. It's a blast. So come join us for three days of education and fun. Meet people from all over in a beautiful setting while learning how to convert a vehicle from gas to electric. ev for You provides lunch each day at great local restaurants. After hours, you can visit many of the local attractions, like Shasta Lake, the largest lake in California, Shasta Dam, the second largest concrete dam in the United States, Shasta Caverns. You can take a dinner cruise on Shasta Lake, take a walk on the Sundial Bridge, Visit Mount Shasta. There's night skiing available during the winter. Visit Bernie Falls National Recreation Area. Or go kayaking at Whiskey Town Lake. You can check out the source of the Sacramento River. The Sacramento River is the largest river in the state of California, and you can see where it bubbles out, out of the ground. We've got world-class fishing, hiking, and biking, all within minutes of EV for use shop. So we we'll hope you'll join us. So visit www.ev4unow.com and register today. The class sizes are limited, so don't delay.